Hello, everyone, and welcome. I have with me guest Mohini, who has been studying with Dr. Ply for over 22 years and has spent countless years and trips to India. So she's going to give us a glimpse into that. We've heard before that India is this birthplace of spirituality. Um, Buddhism, Hinduism has originated here. We've even heard that Jesus spent time in India during the lost years, studying with saints and siddhas. Please give us a glimpse into your experience of what that is like first. Please tell us about how Dr. Ply called uh, India the motherland of spirituality and, and what, you, what your experiences are in that. So recently, Dr. Pillai made a very important point, and that is that many ancient cultures have actually had this amazing tradition of people speaking to gods and goddesses, like we see in Egypt or Greece or Rome, along with India. However, only in India, this ancient tradition has not only been preserved, but it is literally in the fabric of society. Mm -hmm. So not only in the temples do people go to speak to the gods and goddesses every day, but in their homes, in their everyday life, yes. you will find people speaking to the gods and goddesses on a daily basis, and they consider it a very normal part of life. Yes, and we're both in India today, which is, um, makes this kickoff even more experiential, and I've experienced the same thing, going to people's homes and having them be able to, uh, it's, just, it's just very normal here. In kitchens, you know, you have set up, Puja areas and gods and goddesses are represented there. And shopkeeping, you know, in yeah. shops. Everywhere. Anywhere. Any Indian shop will have a puja set up, and before you buy something, he might do a puja. Maybe to get more money, but still, right. it's right. a part of the tradition. Right, right. And um, so you have brought groups here to India for many years, and you yourself have had experiences while you've been staying in India. Can you tell us um, more about that? Yeah, well, I can say that for the past 22 years, I've had the opportunity to really give people the most profound experience of their life. And that's a pretty tall statement, but it's true. I like it. <laughs> it is true. Because before people uh, come here, for example, okay, now this has been 22 years, a lot of these people were never to India before. Mm -hmm. And they were really frightened, and they didn't know what to expect. But I said, okay, I just have one guarantee, and that is that this will be the most profound experience of your life. And why? This land is a living land of divinity. So I've been to Egypt, I've been to Greece, I've been to Rome. It was a fantastic experience to walk among the ruins and um, you can feel the antiquity. However, here, the moment people tell me that when they get down from the plane and step on the land, this land is alive. Mm -hmm. And they can feel the heartbeat of the goddess. They can uh, feel the crest of the goddess on their skin. They can feel it in the air. So India is just magical because it's a living land. And why? There's other reasons for that. This living tradition that was brought forward, this was brought forward by a long line of saints. Mm -hmm. All the way from antiquity to modern times, we have a long lineage of saints that have brought forward the culture of India and brought forward the secrets. Now, Dr. Pillai is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. And that he comes from the ancient Tamil Siddha tradition of southern India which is a very esoteric tradition. In fact, you wouldn't get the secrets anywhere uh, because they're locked up on uh, leaves that were preserved in temple government uh, archives. But now Dr. Pillai is here in order to share all the secrets of his tradition going back to times immemorial. So when you come to India, all that uh, divine vibration is captured in the temples. It's mm -hmm. captured in the saints that are still living today. Mm -hmm. It's captured in the rituals that are practiced in the temples. These yeah. rituals were practiced again from times immemorial, yeah. and they're practiced the exact same way today. Yeah. So when people come here, they often tell me that they had no um, expectation of really what to think, mm -hmm. but when they were absolutely hit, by this direct experience with an ancient truth yeah. and, a, and a real practical experience of a divine being that they could not explain. For example, one time we brought a man here from Singapore mm -hmm. and he was a chiropractor. He told me very openly, I don't believe that anything's going to happen in this temple, but I'm going. And I said, okay, just wait, okay? And I would pray that you would have a direct encounter with the divine. So we took him to a temple which is at this beautiful mountain called Arunachala. And after he was in the Sanctum Sanctorum, when he exited, 
he looked at me and he was literally, he was almost speechless. Yeah. He said, my God, it's true. It happened. I could feel the divine. So when you go through India, where we take people yeah. to the really remote areas, we know where the real power spots yeah. are. There are temples that are preserved by the government in term, term, terms of their architecture. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Pillai knows where the real places of power are. Mm -hmm. And those places are lying hidden. No one could even find it. Yeah. And some of them are not well kept up. But people have told me, when you enter that sanctum sanctorum and you're in front of that god and they're chanting to the god, the god will literally come out of the statue mm -hmm. and really touch people, not only in a way where they'll give a message, but a very emotional way. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think you've had that yes. experience. I have. I have. I've been coming to trips with Dr. Ply and you for um, about four, 13, 12, 12 years now. And it's, I mean, I'm hooked because every time I come to India, something happens. It's kind of like a pill. You know, it's, it, you just have to arrive. And the vibration is so different here that um, something occurs. I can't help but to make a shift in your con my consciousness and, and other people's too. And I've had the pleasure of hearing people um, have experiences of India too. And that's it's so fulfilling to hear of you know you take a week out of your life, for example, or however long, and you come back a totally different person. So um, we've been able to experience that many times. So you too have had personal experiences of the living beings that are here. Do you want to share anything about that? That's true, and not only the gods and goddesses, but these saints. These saints had the power in order to preserve themselves. Uh, they're here in their light body. Mm -hmm. So I've had the experience, not only in temples in the Sanctum Sanctorum, where I've had gods and goddesses give me messages or make contact with me, and mm -hmm. then I would leave that temple and they would come to me that night in a dream and tell me what I needed to do. All that is, is a very profound experience, and it's mm -hmm. really treasured. But what's really remarkable to me is that there are beings who were here, some of them from times in memoriam, some of them only a couple hundred years ago, where if I entered their temple, which was consecrated for them, that they would actually come and give me a very direct meditation experience that I know that I couldn't uh, construct myself. Right. So this has happened time and time again, so much so that my experiences with these beings is just as real as talking to you right. during this video. So that's why, for me, when Dr. Pillai said that India is the spiritual motherland of the world, to me, it's in every moment, it's pulsating with this angel intelligence. You know, lately right. Dr. Pillai's yeah. been talking about how these gods and goddesses are angels. Yeah. And everyone can relate to angels in the Judeo-Christian tradition mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. traditions. So light beings. here, light beings, mm -hmm. this angel intelligence is everywhere. You can have them visit you at night in your room when you're on the trip and you're uh, sleeping and they, they can visit you in a dream. It can happen in a temple. It can happen while you're riding on the bus. Mm -hmm. It happens the moment that you get off the plane and step on the land. Mm -hmm. So in fact, I used to have this experience when I would spend a lot of time here where when I was sleeping at night, Mother India was so alive that I could feel her rocking me and she would sing me to sleep. Aww. So. This kind of thing is something that you have to come and have an actual experience. Yep. Yep. And that's what's so fantastic about this opportunity coming up yep. in January, starting in January, but mm -hmm. throughout February, where Dr. Pillai really wants people to have a, an extended experience in yeah. India because he said what you really need is to go deeply in meditation and stay in meditation for hours and hours on end. Yeah. We'll be putting people in a state of trance, yeah. laying down on the floor, where they will actually be in a state where they can then absorb fully that angel intelligence mm -hmm. that's vibrating everywhere. And they need to do that for days on end. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get out of their routine, because yeah, if you go to work every day, you know, it's really difficult to be in contact with angels when you're worrying about your cell phone ringing or your next email. Your laundry and whatever, yeah. So this opportunity is something unprecedented. And we'll be hearing more about the temple. So Mohini, you touched upon the magic of the power vortexes, the temple. You touched upon the rituals, um, the experiences people have. I have had the opportunity to lead people through a silent retreat for two days. Mm -hmm. And it was during about the second or third hour that people told me that I was chanting a mantra for Swami Ramalinga. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mantra is Arut Param Jyoti. And it was at that time, when they had been in meditation for hours, that 
many people said that they could see him walking around the room. So yes, it is true. This is a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. First, just prepare yourself by even thinking of mystical India, feeling as if you're mm -hmm. there. And then ask Dr. Pillai, Dr. Pillai, is this my time mm -hmm. to come? And can you bless me to be there for this yeah. incredible experience? Yeah. yeah. And I know too from experience that um, there's a calling, there's typically a calling to, you know, your heart knows and your soul knows that this is the time. And then the, you know, if you make a commitment inwardly, things fall into place. And we've heard a lot of stories about that too, of people being, being able to just have miracles open up. And it's happened for me too. It's like, wow. I don't know how this is going to happen, but I'm going on that trip. And then you just take the time off of work and then, you know, you just, you just go for it. So um, that'll happen too, if there, if it's right and it's meant to be, and, and that's how it's going to unfold magically, of course. And just like India, absolute magic and mysticism. And that's what you get to tap into here. So thank you again for tuning in. Thank you, Mohini, for being with us. Bye. And we'll talk to you next week.